I'm just gonna come out and say it. Restraints can make or break a ride. Some people say restraints aren't a big deal. I am not one of those people. Coasters are designed to exert forces on the body, negative, positive, and lateral. These forces are meant to be enjoyable, but the unfortunate truth is that with these forces comes the need for a physical barrier to keep you from falling out of the train. Sometimes, the restraints work hand in hand with the ride's layout in perfect harmony. Other times, the restraint makes the ride so uncomfortable that you can't even focus on the forces. Or it restricts your body so much that it renders these forces useless. Everyone has mixed opinions on the best and worst restraints, and today I'm going to take a crack at it. These are the 10 best and 10 worst coaster restraints. There are a ton of restraints that serve their purpose and don't enhance the ride experience or hinder it. I don't have a strong opinion on the old school premier launch coaster lap bars from their 90s models like Mr. Freeze or Poltergeist, nor do I love or hate the classic B&M over the shoulder restraints that you'll find on Batman the Ride or Kumba. The SNS free spin vests also do their job just fine. The ones I picked out for the best and worst really stand out to me as having a feature or flaw that changes the ride experience. First, I want to pick out a few restraints that people seem to love or hate, and I don't have a strong opinion of these. The Gravity Group Timberliner trains, as found on Mindblower and Switchback, are just okay for me despite most people loving them. I can get airtime room with them, but it's not always that easy. Gerslauer and Mock Ride's lap bars are very similar, and I do appreciate that these looping models don't have shoulder restraints but they seem to tighten really hard and really fast, so by the time I hit the brakes on hang time or copperhead strike, I'm pretty stable. Gerslauer lap bars on their RMCs are decent, but they have their flaws also. They are comfortable, but it's hard to avoid getting stapled on New Texas Giant and Iron Rattler. Premier Ride's comfort collars are also pretty polarizing, and I can see both sides. They don't really touch you to get in the way of airtime, but they will cause some pain when the train delivers some lateral forces. T3 tried to eliminate headbanging on an SLC, but ended up creating a new problem with legs being crushed. This wasn't a major problem for me, but if I rode it again, I could see where that could be the case. Finally, shout out to Cyclone at Wonderland in Amarillo, Texas for having no restraint whatsoever. Just sit in your bathtub shaped car and take a ride on this wild mouse coaster. Just don't be an idiot that stands up during the ride and you'll be just fine. Let's kick this off with my number 10 least favorite restraint and that's the lap bar from Aero Hyper Coasters. The coasters I've ridden that come to mind are Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point and Desperado at Buffalo Bills. It seems to me that these lap bars just kind of flop down and will continue to click down if you don't hold them up. They're really heavy, and that's their main problem. They're not really that hard like a Schwarzkopf lap bar, but they're not cushy and soft like lap bars from other manufacturers. I like to get airtime, and if you don't hold these up from the time you pull them down in the station, you'll get stapled. You can manage these by holding them up and still get great airtime, but their design is not the best. My number 10 favorite restraint are the lap bars on Cannibal. These are big, much bigger than the B&M clamshells, and given the nature of the ride, I don't care how big they are. I just appreciate that this does not have over-the-shoulder restraints. I also rarely get stapled with these square-shaped restraints. They're pretty comfortable, and they hold you in while Cannibal tries to eject you out of your seat on that first drop, and then tips you upside down during that lagoon roll. Any restraint that secure, while remaining comfortable, belongs on this list. My number nine least favorite restraint are the lap bars on PTC trains. You'll find these trains on a lot of different types of wooden coasters, especially those from CCI and DIN, but so many others, including GCI and even PTC themselves. It's very likely that there's a wooden coaster at any park near you that uses these lap bars. These have the bar on one side and it seems so hard to prevent these from stapling you. The coaster where this caused the biggest problem for me was Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. The train would hit a rough patch and that PTC lap bar would come all the way down. Compared to Timberliners or pretty much any other wooden coaster trains, the PTC lap bars are hard to handle and they're definitely my least favorite restraints on a wooden coaster. My number nine favorite restraint is the lap bar on the Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster. Of course, I'm talking about El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. I'm always surprised when I read comments from people who got stapled on El Toro. I've ridden it over 20 times and it's never happened to me. I've always managed to get room in the station and maintain that room throughout the ride. These have bars on each side of your legs, but come down and rest on your stomach instead of your lap. 
especially if you scoot forward in your seat. 20 plus rides, no stapling, and these lap bars give me plenty of space to experience the world-class airtime on El Toro. My number eight least favorite restraint is the RMC Raptor over-the-shoulder restraint. I've ridden both Railblazer and Wonder Woman, and these things have aggressive airtime. In the back, you'll get it on that first drop and then the drop off the S-curve. In the front, you get it entering that dive loop, and anywhere else you sit, you get a big dose of it on that off-access airtime hill. Every time you fly out of your seat on these crazy airtime moments, your shoulders dig into the restraints. If RMC could have figured out how to get a lap bar on these Raptors, it would have been so much better. But maybe for space reasons, and maybe because it's so aggressive, they went with a harness, and it hurts both the ride experience and your shoulders. My number eight favorite restraint is the Giovanola lap bars. Goliath and Titan may be subpar hypers, but they have amazingly comfortable restraints. These have bars on both sides of your legs, and they come down similar to the El Toro lap bars. But I don't think I've ever had this thing touch my lap on either hyper coaster. Maybe if these coasters were built more for airtime and less for positive forces, they would have to give it more restricting lap bars. You don't get much of anything in terms of airtime on Goliath or Titan, but at least you can enjoy your smooth, boring ride with a comfortable lap bar that doesn't seem all that necessary. My number seven least favorite restraint is the Intamin soft strap over the shoulder restraint. A lot of coasters opened up in the mid 2000s with the hard plastic version of this, and most of them have converted to the soft straps. I appreciate the change. This cuts down a lot on the head or neck banging on the rapid transitions, and you get plenty of rapid transitions on Maverick, Stormrunner, Fahrenheit, and Intimidator 305. My biggest problem with these is how bulky they are, especially the big metal bar that comes down on your lap. On all the rides I mentioned, there is some decent to solid airtime in the layout. With that big bulky bar that's sitting on your lap, you don't leave your seat. So I appreciate how the soft straps improve the top, but I wish they could have redesigned the restraints to make them less restricting on the bottom. My number seven favorite restraint is the Millennium Flyer lap bar. You find these on the newer GCI coasters and these are just so comfortable and open. They act like a T-bar, so there's just one bar between your feet. And a lot of times, you can get it to click once before it hits your stomach. The ride ops will push it down onto your stomach, so if you scoot forward in your seat, you can buy a little bit of room. GCI wooden coasters like Apocalypse, Thunderhead, Mystic Timbers, and countless others don't have the strongest airtime, so these trains are not built to keep you in while you're getting wild ejector airtime. The best ejector moment I've experienced with a Millennium Flyer train was on Ghost Rider, which is a CCI that was retracked by GCI and given new trains. Coasters with Millennium Flyer trains generally have good laterals, and they also have decent floater airtime, so these trains are perfect for that. You can also find these on some other non-GCI wooden coasters like Roller Coaster at Lagoon, and I hope these spread out to other wooden coasters in the future because they're among the best wooden coaster restraints out there. My number six least favorite restraint is the B&M Vest. These have been replacing the regular B&M over-the-shoulder restraint over the last 10 years or so, and this is what you'll see on their new inverted coasters, dive coasters, and wing coasters. On the wing coasters and the one invert I've ridden with this, Banshee, the vest tightens so much during the ride that it either pinches my legs or crushes my torso. On the one dive coaster I've ridden with it, Valraven, it took away all of the airtime over the vertical drops. I understand the advantage of the vests. It eliminates the possibility of headbanging because there's nothing around your ears. But I think the cons of the vests are much greater than the pros and I wish that B&M would just go back to the old school restraints that you'll find on Batman, Griffin, and Medusa. My number six favorite restraint is the Premier Skyrocket lap bars. My experience with these on Phobia Fear Coaster, Superman Ultimate Flight, and Full Throttle have all been pretty good. The Premier Skyrocket trains are awful. There's absolutely no room to get in without twisting your body into knots. But once you sit down, you'll be greeted with a comfortable and loose fitting lap bar with a soft shin guard. On Full Throttle, I usually end up with a lot of room, but I'm still secure in the seat. These are light, easy to hold up, and I don't think I've ever been stapled on any of these three coasters. West Coast Racers and the Skyrocket 2s in the SeaWorld chain have the same lap bar, but the unnecessary comfort collar on these coasters knocked them off this list. My number five least favorite restraint is the Intamin Hard Over the Shoulder Restraint. Like I said with the soft strap model, these coasters started with the hard plastic kind and they were retrofitted after a few years. The two coasters I know of that still use the hard ones are Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa and King Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure. These have the bulky bar sitting on your lap just like the soft strap kind, but they also have the unforgiving hard shoulder restraints. 
They don't dig into your shoulders, but you can definitely smack your neck against them. They also look big and bulky and ridiculous. Intamin has done worse, but this is pretty bad. My number five favorite restraint are the lap bars on Phantom's Revenge. These come down from the side and they never really touch your lap. There are a few other restraints that come from the side rather than the middle or over the top, like the Timberliners, but these are by far the best. Phantom's Revenge has some aggressive airtime during the second half of the ride, and everybody raves about it. But let's give some love to those lap bars for allowing us riders to experience all of that airtime at its max potential. My number four least favorite restraint is the Vekoma SLC over the shoulder restraint. A lot of the over the shoulder restraints will come down and they won't come anywhere near your head if you're tall enough, specifically those on aero coasters. The Vekoma SLC restraints are bulky and padded, and they sit right next to your ears. With all of the bad transitions, headbanging is inevitable. Vekoma thinks that putting this padding on the restraints will make the headbanging more tolerable, but it seems like without it, you have a better chance of avoiding bashing your ears in altogether. The T3 restraints transfer the pain from your ears to your legs, but the vest restraints on Riddler Revenge got it right. I think most parks should either tear these SLCs down or get the new trains with the vests. It could give new life to these coasters that are littered all over the world. My number four favorite restraint is the B&M Clamshell. These seem to be universally loved, and you can find them on any B&M Hyper or Giga Coaster. These trains have big, roomy, recliner-style seats, and then the clamshell restraints that come down between your feet and sits right above your lap. When it's done right, these are great, but it's hard to avoid being stapled with these. You can scoot up in your seat, but if you do it too much, you look ridiculous and the ride op will usually tell you to sit back so you can't really overdo it. Some parks and some ride ops are worse than others when it comes to stapling. One big offender of this was Canada's Wonderland with Behemoth, but I didn't really have this problem with Fury or Diamondback. But again, it really does depend on the ride op. This is a great design by B&M, and it would be higher if you could do something to avoid getting stapled. My number three least favorite restraint is the Togo shoulder pads. I really hate these things and they're unnecessary. SNS uses a similar restraint for Steel Hog and their Scream and Squirrel models, but I haven't ridden those. The Togo experience that I'm talking about comes from the Big Apple Coaster at New York, New York Hotel and Casino. They aren't a full horse collar restraint. They just lower down onto your shoulders and then there's a separate lap bar that would just be fine by itself. But those things rest right on or right above your shoulders and they're in a prime spot to slam your neck into it. And given Togo's famous bad transitions, this ride had plenty of neck banging, thanks to these terrible restraints. My number three favorite restraint is the RMC lap bar. A lot of people hate these because they're big and they're bulky and they're heavy. You see everybody struggle to push them back up after the ride is over. But I love them because of the shin guards. I use that shin guard to stop from getting stapled. The ride ops will push the lap bar down and before I can touch my lap, the shin guards smack right into my legs and the bar stops. Unless you get an overzealous ride off that will force the issue, most of them will stop once they feel the resistance, so I can get enough airtime room on just about every RMC out there. My home park of Magic Mountain is pretty good about not stapling, so I usually have great rides on Twisted Colossus. Discovery Kingdom and New England haven't been as kind with their RMCs, but at least the shin guards give you a fighting chance. These are also really easy to hold up during the ride, so you can keep getting that airtime throughout the entire ride. My number two least favorite restraint is the Intamin U-Brick, as found on Six Flags New England's Superman the Ride. These were installed after an accident early in the ride's life, and it gets its name from the U-shape of having a bar on each side of your legs and the brick-like nature of that nasty bar. The T-Bar was outlawed in Massachusetts, and the U-Brick made its grand debut and butchered one of the greatest coasters ever built. Superman has a spectacular, well-rounded layout with lots of airtime moments. But these U-Bricks come down directly on your thighs and they are unforgiving. There is little that you can do to avoid getting stapled because they sit so low on your legs. The good restraints on this list sit higher up on your stomach like the Millennium Flyers, but there's not much that you can do with that big, heavy thing that's just sitting on your legs. It doesn't really hurt, it just kills the airtime hills. Last time I rode this, I discovered that if you sit back and then scoot up, the lap bar will sit closer to your lap instead of sitting on your thighs. And that leaves the possibility of a little gap between your body and the lap bar so you can enjoy some of the airtime. It's the complete opposite strategy of any other lap bar. But these U-Bricks are an odd breed. And luckily, I think that Superman might be the only ride that has these. My number two favorite restraint is the Intamin T-Bar. This is the restraint that Superman had before the accident. So they really went from one extreme to the other. You'll find this on a lot of the Intamin Mega Coasters. 
Cedar Point has two coasters with these T-bars, in Millennium Force and Top Fuel Dragster. The closest one to me is at Knott's Berry Farm in Accelerator. The T-bar is a very minimal restraint that comes down between your feet, and it feels very open. For all the bad intimate restraints, these are fantastic. They're easy to avoid stapling, they don't feel like they're encompassing you like the Maverick restraints, and they're basically as minimal as you can get for the type of rides that they're on. You're talking about coasters that exceed 90 miles per hour and 200, 300, or even 400 feet. It's the perfect lap bar for those aggressive rides, and I wish they used this on all of their coasters, especially my pick for the number one worst restraint. And no surprise at all, my number one least favorite restraint is the Skyrush Thigh Crusher. This comes down over your head and digs into your legs. Superman's U-Brick kills the airtime, but it doesn't hurt. This kills the airtime, and it crushes the nerves in your legs. Skyrush is known for its aggressive airtime, and I felt all of those negative Gs in my legs. You never want to dread a great moment of ejector airtime, but that's what I found myself doing on Skyrush. God awful. The worst. Kill it with fire. My number one favorite restraint is the restraint that is no restraint. It's the buzz bar. You'll find these on a lot of older wooden coasters, but also some more recent ones, like Silverwood's Timber Terror and Indiana Beach's Cornball Express. These are also known as single position lap bars. They come down and they lock into place and they have no way of coming down further. They're shared for both riders in the seat, and they're usually a good foot or so away from your lap. Some of these coasters have some pretty good airtime also, like Comet at Hershey Park, Phoenix at Knoebels, and possibly the most extreme example, Coaster at Playland. This wouldn't work for rides like El Toro, but Coaster has a few airtime moments that seem too strong for the buzz bar. And it's kind of amazing that nothing bad has ever happened on that coaster since it opened in 1958. The buzz bar provides just enough protection to keep its rider safe, but the fact that it can't come down any farther throughout the ride, and the fact that it's far off your lap, makes it my favorite restraint. So those are my 10 favorite and my 10 least favorite restraints. Let me know in the comments below which restraints stand out as the best or worst for you, and where you may agree or disagree with my choices. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.